listeners and viewers, this is the Phase On View Podcast, episode 126, 26 to be exact. Um, Phase On View Podcast on all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Man, we getting right into it. Mm-hmm. My guest co-host, we back in the building, Nicole. <laughs> oh my gosh, these topics today... I'm ready for it. Yeah, we got some interesting topics today. First, we're going to talk about the importance of communications and setting boundaries. And we're going to talk about platonic and an intimate relationship. The difference between the two, of course, is a difference. We're going to talk about new music, Khaled, Tyler, Megan Thee Stallion. That's my, my baby. <laughs> is vegan the way to go? 62,000 pounds of raw meat has been recalled this week before Memorial Day. So we're going to talk about that. Man, first, I'm going to let my cousin take the floor on this. <laughs> importance of communication and setting boundaries. Yeah, so obviously it's important to speak your mind, communicate, you know, say how you feel, especially in um, platonic and intimate relationships. So... We know that there there's stages in dating, right? Yeah, the, the stages of dating. Well, what we talked about previously before, the stages of dating. Right. Uh, you can go from the chill stage to the Which friends is, with what's, benefits. What's the chill stage? The chill stage is just really getting to know each other, seeing if you really like to, like each other, cool it, cool it a little bit and see how things go. Then you have the friends with benefits. So, like, after you chilled and talked, <laughs> and had y'all spill, you decide what y'all want to do. Or you could just jump that stage and go to the talking stage. Yeah, but I know yeah. it's a difference between friends with benefits and actually talking. Because talking is actually communication within, you know, like a consistent basis. Actually trying to get to know that person, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah and trying to get to know that person. But we know the speed of of our, of our, of our way of dating nowadays and, and how everything is perceived. So it's like... If we not if we not friends with benefits or talking, we not even you know, or not even friends with benefits. If I can't even hold a conversation with you, and it's just a one time thing. I don't even got your number saved, then <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. You not even you not even doing nothing with that. So those are the stages, and then you also have uh, after the talking stage, of course, into my relationship. Dating. You have dating, dating. Yes. And it's important to establish your boundaries at each point, and like in these stages. Because everybody has different thoughts about, you know, what they're trying to do with somebody else. Everybody has different motives. You got to make it clear. You got to make it known, you know, what your intentions are right away. So if you just want to, you know, just, you know, do the friends and benefits thing, then it's important to tell people, like, make that known. Make that clear. Don't play with people. You know, don't string people along. Yeah, just... You have to you have to establish those boundaries. And you have to keep on establishing those boundaries because sometimes people forget, mm-hmm. people get comfortable, and they might be looking for something more serious. Maybe that's not what you're really looking for at the moment. It's just like, I feel like, yeah, just just say how you feel. Just just say yeah, how you feel. It's, it's, important, it's important to establish say how you it. feel and establish a grounding with one another because... You don't want to have no mixy situation, especially if somebody that you're attracted to. And say if y'all just don't, y'all don't really correlate on the on the talking type level. But y'all can be friends with benefits. Y'all can talk and kiss and do all that extra stuff around it. But y'all can't hold the uh, the genuine conversation. So it's different mm-hmm. about what what you what you want and what you put in, what energy you put in. Don't don't leave the other person looking fool because that's what's going on nowadays. That's all you basically seeing is is friends with benefits or the talking stage and there's nothing wrong with that because i feel like you need to get to know a person way before that's one thing i say that is a little bit better now but it's a little bit shaky because in that talking stage and with friends with benefits people can talk to whoever they want to so people are feel, feel the, the need to be free and open to what they want to do right so it's like if you don't establish nothing man dude say how you females feel gonna do, do what and they then do. another thing I feel like it's a common misconception that, like, girls, like, women, we are, like, we're, like, the ones always looking for a long-term relationship, and that's not always the case. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not always the case. Like, you have to be very open. 
with yourself and establish exactly mm-hmm. what it is you want. Because, you know, girls be out here on the same thing. On the same on type the time. On the same type time. On the same type time. <laughs> I be trying to tell dudes, man, you get your heart broken. I be trying to tell you, bro. Nah, yeah. Let me just put it like this. This These new females, and there's nothing wrong with it at all. But not saying new females, the new way of how relations and, and how females and males interact is different. These yeah. females out here are just like males. You talking about you a dog, they can do dog stuff too. And it doesn't. And that's the crazy part about that. Does That does not make them any less of a person. That doesn't yeah. make them a thought. That doesn't make them anything. Because right. you're out there doing it too, bro. Right. You keeping it a buck. You just got to right. understand and know who you talking to. Right. Because... These these females out here, they don't care just like we don't care. Uh, supposedly don't care until you get your feelings hurt. Yeah. <laughs> we moved away from, like, this generation has, like, I think about our grandparents and mm-hmm. how they got married at, like, right. 17, 18 years old and started yeah. having kids, like, so early. Like, we're not even in that mindset no more. Like, we're trying to, like, focus on our careers first, get established mm-hmm. first, and then, like, get into a relationship, which I think is a great thing, but I feel like you know, people <laughs> might be a little too independent and too focused yeah. on not finding love. Because, I mean, that's important. And, like, we're all looking for, you know, same thing. Yeah, it has its pros and its cons. Because, like like my cousin just said, about back in the day, they were more into, even that, but they were more to getting to know each other because the, the way of communication, it was different. The, how we communicate is through a DM, through a message, through a like, through a mention, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's over the internet. It's not a face to face interaction. So you don't you can't even tell really who this person really is behind the phone through magnetism and certain things like that that you would be able to see in a face to face communication. That's why they have so much longevity uh in, in relations and talking like our grandparents and and some of our mothers and fathers, it's, it's real because... That brings me to a good point. That just mm-hmm. made me... Y'all, we need to get out more. We need to interact yeah. more, like, yeah. in real life. And stop trying to have relationships over social media and over the internet. Because, I mean, that's fine. Don't get me wrong. Like, I've had my own share of, like, meeting people through Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Like, that's our generation. Like, that's normal for us. But I feel like... No, at some point, like, we need to have real interactions with real people in real life. And we need to not be so attached mm-hmm. to social media. Because people put on facades all day, every day. People make up these personas on social media that's not always necessarily them. Mm-hmm. And so you got to use the sermon. Every time you're, like, trying to talk to somebody, like, you got to, you know, make that judgment call. And, Yeah. I, I, t- I totally agree. I feel like selling boundaries is the first and number one rule. And communication is the, is the number one rule as well. Both of them mm-hmm. are number one rules because if you don't have that, we can't talk, bro. We can't we can't even go anywhere. I, if I can't right. communicate with you, if me and you can't coexist in, a, in just in a conversation, I can't. I can't do I'm going to let y'all females know this right now. I'm not dealing with I'm not dealing with no irrational stuff. I'm just being real and that's just what I'm not going to tolerate. If I can't have a conversation with you, we can't come to a agreement on anything, then it's it's no good. Yeah. It's no a lot good. of people don't understand that it's best just to like say what it is up front. Like like just just push your dirt out there. Like you might as well just tell people what it is. Like if you got somebody you used to talk to, an ex, mm-hmm. somebody in a cut, whatever like you know, like who cares? Just do you, but you know, be grown and talk about it. Say it. Yeah, you just, but you better speak your mind. You better speak your mind out this junk. Cause I'm telling you, Before these you females, hey, look here, dudes. These females out here, Rufus, they don't care, bro. They leaving us in the dust mm. nowadays. <laughs> and I'm not having it, bro. I'm not going to have it. I ain't having it. Yeah, no, girls moving differently, for sure. I ain't going to have it. Girls moving different, which I'm proud of. You know, I think that's a good thing because, um, for so long, it's just been like the guys so, do the dirt and the girls got to like deal with it. But so I, I think things are changing. I got a question for my cousin. So in this time, in, in this, do you think it is okay for for females to feel like they want to get flued out all the time and, and get, get, their, <laughs> get all these paid expenses? I know this is off topic a little bit, but I'm, a, I'm I want to. I want to dive into this. Do you think they should always get flued out and on all these things? What about um, what about a female doing that for a male? 
why is it why is it why isn't it looked upon <laughs> that? I mean, I'm not saying it like a dude just you know it's a it's a manly thing to be. I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying why females don't take the time out to. <laughs> you know that's you, you ain't flying you ain't flying out you ain't flying me out. Yeah, that's that's actually a good question. I've never heard of a girl flying out a guy. That's it. It just doesn't seem like. I don't know. I've never thought about it. Yeah, because I'm y'all females out here fin finessing. I've never thought about it. Y'all out here it. finessing. Watch our backs, man. Because I'm telling you, mm. I'm telling y'all, y'all getting finessed out here. If y'all, if y'all want to get they, flued the females, out, females, the new dudes, they out here wild. Yeah, but if y'all want to get flued out, then speak up. Tell us about. Speak up. You know why? Angle. You know why these women get flued out because they speak up. And cause they no, say, they no, they, they get they get flown out cause they got them butt ejections and they and they out here re ready to go. Well then y'all better hit the gym. Oh well, I'll tell you. <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> you ain't lying. Hit the gym and you'll get flown out. Get flown out. She'll fly you oh, out. We 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 shall see. <laughs> we shall see. She'll fly you out. Anyways, <laughs> new music reviews. We're gonna talk about Kylie, Tyler Creator, and Megan Thee Stallion since. Her favorite and one of my favorite artists now is Megan Thee Stallion. We're gonna talk about Megan Thee Stallion first. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. She's one of your favorites. That's what new, <laughs> new Fever came out. That joint is cranking, cranking. It's playing in the background right now. I just feel like Megan Thee Stallion is the full package. I'm just keep talking about it. I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm not lying to you. She, <laughs> she the full package. She's from yeah, Houston. Bro. I'm about to go to Houston. Oh. I'm not playing. That's the baby. She can snap for real, cause she can rap. She has a persona. She has a look. She has a personality. She's, like she's very, perfect. very driven. Her mother, her mother did an amazing job with her. Shout and out to her another mother. Another thing Rest that I peace. really like about her is that she isn't like a like a mean girl. Like, yeah. okay, so we love Nikki, right? You know, I love Nikki. Let me just say that. <laughs> Nikki is a mean girl. Like, yeah. she, she one of those type of rappers. Where you know she not gonna really fuck with you off text, like you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. based upon your resume, just really. based, yeah, just based upon yeah your credentials or whatever. Mm -hmm. But Megan is actually nice. I haven't met her personally, so I can't really like say that hundred percent. But just based on what I'm noticing, what I see, she's more like team oriented instead of mm -hmm. being like it's all about her. She's yeah. on top, and she's it's always more, with, like, she's and she's always with her friends. She's always yeah. bringing that, and that's that's good to see that she's. Very yeah. interactive with her friends. A lot of female, a lot of females don't have a lot of other female friends. You know, just yeah. being honest. Yes, you have girls that you go out with, but mm -hmm. she she flies them out and stuff. So that's pretty dope. And then can I also say that I feel like this is my personal opinion. Megan is like our generation is like Trina. Oh yeah, and that's I'm a perfect, I'm perfect. saying that because based on like her content, the type of things that she talk about her lyrics. But her delivery, like, Trina was, like, kind of, how do you describe Trina's flow? It was, like, kind of aggressive. Yeah, she from the South. She from, uh, she from Miami. So it's kind of aggressive. They both it have that aggressive, aggressive type style. But I just, still very feminine, but still yeah, very, like, boss. I feel like, you know? I just feel like uh, Megan has more finesse with her, with her rhyming ability. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Trina was more so cutthroat with her, with her verbiage and lyrics. So. Yeah. Right, that's a good comparison. But that's how I see Megan as mm -hmm. like our Trina. Like she's yeah, she she's rated R in her lyrics. Mm -hmm. She's this, she's that. She's very feminine, but she's like still has this like uh this like dominant mm -hmm. quality does, about her. And that's what Trina had too. That's so dope. I'm here for Megan. I hope she succeeds. We love you. I hope she sees this. Uh, she, <laughs> but, she will. But um she out now. Yeah, we want you to keep doing your thing. That Cali album, uh, I, I like the Cali album. Don't get me wrong, I like the Cali album. But the Cali album, man, the Cali album is real good. I just feel like, like I was saying, I just feel like it's polished a little bit too much. Um, of course, he has the pop hits. He has the rapping in it. I just felt like the verses should have been long. The songs I do like is Wish Wish with Cardi B yeah. and 21. That's just going to be it. That's going to be the banger. You yeah. Stay is going to be the summer song with J Baldwin, Jeremiah, Lil Baby, Meek Mill. That's gonna be it. It's a, that's a, a, a killer. Then you got the song with uh, CeeLo and Nas, which is good as well. I mean, I like the I like the sound of it sonically. It just when you get too many artists on a lot of songs, it it becomes. Yeah. It's like you're looking for certain artists to do things, and they might not get a long enough verse as you think they would have, or they might not get the part that you think they would have in the song. So. 
I mean, I feel like if I was giving ratings to these albums just off a of first listen, uh, Fever, the Fever with Megan Thee Stallion, I would give that a, a strong B plus A because I I like Megan Thee Stallion, and she really came hard with it. But this is just our first listens, honestly. Uh, the DJ Khaled probably would give a B, and I love the song Higher with Nipsey Hussle. It was that was just a perfect sonically song with John Legend and Nipsey. It just felt that that just put everything in perspective of how his life was cherished and how and his and his lyrics and what they meant and he, what he meant to us. So I felt it was very dope. The Tyler. Oh, good. Question. So about the Tyler album, mm -hmm. do you think like because there were so many artists, did it feel oversaturated or like he was looking for like? Certain, certain sounds within, yeah, yeah, from certain people. But he always does that, but and it never feels that oversaturated. It uh, it kind of does, but it doesn't. In this case, it does because he had um, like too many different styles. I, from from what I from what I know, he had over he had over twenty five features. That's like well, twenty five artists, you know, you know, throughout the whole album, and that's a lot. That's a lot of people to have on the album. Good, yeah, good. A lot of great artists: Big Sean, Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, Nas, CeeLo, It's Twenty One. Anybody you can name, honestly, been on has been on this album. But like my cousin said, like I feel like it is get oversaturated. Like it's just like. But Kyle is a DJ. Hmm? Yeah, he's a DJ. He, he's he's an executive a... producer. He's a he's a producer. That's one thing about Kylie. He should get more credit because he does. He puts a lot of the, a lot of these big artists and and if not a room together, but put them in a in a song together and yeah. and, it, and it and it makes beautifully. Not all yeah. the songs, but he does make hits. So he has those song. He had the song with Jay Z, Beyonce, and, mm -hmm. and Quavo, and so I mean he could do it. Honestly. Yeah, he's he's, he's honestly he's smart. Too. He's a genius he when is, it comes he, to like he really how he put together his album and he just hit like all the points. If you think about it, mm -hmm. he's hitting like so many different yep. types so, of and, yep, different and type I think of that audience, was yep. his his intention. That's mm -hmm. why I asked you like was it oversaturated, but all the people he chose were like prime. Yeah, people they were prime who, people. To pay attention so it's to. just it's just hard to That's get a full smart. yeah it is smart because it's just but the only thing the only contour is just hard to get a good listen when you like yeah, focus so on so yeah it's just people and it's kind of overwhelming at yeah. the same time it's overwhelming to yeah. see all these features um so i get at like a, a beef right now uh tyler igor this this is honestly i i i like it I don't know about how others feel about it because I heard a lot of mixed reviews about it, but I like it because it's not in the realm of Tyler Creator. You see where he's come from, from Goblin. Me and my cousin were just talking about it. He used to, you know, Yonkers in certain videos, and I wasn't a huge Odd Future fan, but I always loved Tyler Creator. I always loved Earl, and I always loved uh, uh, Frank Ocean, of course. Mm -hmm. So to hear his to hear to hear that type of sound and the sound he has is just so much growth mm -hmm. and it sounds sonically good the mix he he produced it all the creative all all the work it just it was kind of a masterpiece of uh, of in his work yeah in his in you his catalog see the art i feel in like in the you see the art and the growth in it mm -hmm. and yeah. and, it's, and and the features were the features was perfect perfectly mixed of course the stand out one for a lot of people because you wouldn't think they would be together and the song is Playboy Cardi. Mm -hmm. Playboy Cardi is on another level. I've been I've been telling people about Playboy Cardi. But Playboy <laughs> Cardi is that is that guy. He been on Solange album, he been on ton tons of album now. He on a he on a new wave. He was on oh yeah, he was. Yep, he was that was Solange so album. random, yep. but it worked. And it's I was it, so surprised. His his so sound, of course you can say he mumble rap, whatever you wanna say. Honestly, it works for him. <laughs> and I'm just put it like that and He's not that far fetched from a Uzi Vert. I know he can't rap as well as Uzi, but that that same realm, he does it perfectly. He he has a good sound. And when he pops out in the feature, it shows. And that I go, I would give it like a, a a B or A right now too. So we just we just gonna keep on listening to his new music. Yeah, you can tell he dropping. worked hard on it. So we appreciate that about yeah, Tyler. Definitely and seeing his growth. Yeah, seeing this growth too, and 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 also just being real about the situation. He, him, no matter if he's trolling or not, being comfortable enough to step out the side of, of himself and you know talking about his experiences or if he is gay or not. With no matter what it is, he's comfortable enough to say that, and he's he's been making amazing music just in general for a long time. But this is this is a good album. 
especially from the, his last album. So, hey, I don't got I don't got no bad reviews on none of the album, man. Megan, call me. <laughs> <laughs> call me. Did you heard? Call me. Yeah, we love you, Megan. For real. And lastly, man, our topic is which is a which is a good topic is is vegan the way to go. Um, sixty-two thousand pounds of new meat has been recalled. And this is of Memorial Day weekend, before a couple of days before Memorial Day weekend, cookouts. and cookouts and things are just you know ruined now. Not all, not all, of course, because you know us black people, we still saying, gonna be up yeah, in that. No, they not. Yeah, but at the same time, it is it is an eye opener. Um, the more and more I see, because I do have family members, I do have friends that do eat organic, do eat vegan, and are uh, pescatarians. And it opens my eyes to a lot of things. My father is one of the best cooks I've ever, <laughs> ever, honestly, to me, to ever. me. <laughs> and it's like, you know, um, the way he makes food and I could never like step away from the, the meat, but I understand because it's a lot of processed foods we do out, eat out here in restaurants and in stores. It's just like you be, have to be very mindful of, you just have to be very mindful of what you put in your body. And I respect vegans so much because, you know, you even if you converted from meat to being vegan, that's a that's a huge step. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge step, and you're and it's not easy. It's a and it's a commitment, and and I I respect a lot of people because it's like you can still maintain your weight, you can still maintain a lot of different your things, health. your health in general, and if not, be better. Mm -hmm. But I just don't like solely believe in that because I feel like. A uh, certain type of meats hold a certain amount of protein. Yeah. We need certain vitamins in our body. And this, Although we can get vitamins from uh, I mean, yeah, other resources. Protein yeah. from other things. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's good to take breaks from meat, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, not eat it so much or change the way that you prepare it if you don't want to go vegan or if that's hard. But I think mm -hmm. cutting back would help a lot. You know, with your overall health, you know, like you might notice your cholesterol goes down yeah. or um, like how you feel. Because I noticed that when I started being vegetarian and I stopped eating meat, initially I was really like sluggish. I was weak. I didn't have that much energy. I felt like something was taken away from me. And so I kind of went back to it a little bit. And then gradually, again, I kind of stopped I, like like wing myself off of eating it mm -hmm. so it became easier and then eventually like your body will adjust like you'll do your own research and you'll find out you know things that you should eat to get your protein or like that yeah. but um i feel like we shouldn't discourage them from being vegan like oh, no, it's, it's, we should yeah. de like being vegan is a is a great choice it, it a but great choice. it's also a health risk mm -hmm. you know because and a lot of people you're not getting a lot it. of mm -hmm. Things that you would normally be getting from other foods. Um, so I feel like, like, do it based on your own health. Like, don't just go cold turkey and try to, like, just cut out cheese and meat and, and everything else. Like, see how your body feels and, you know, just try to be healthy. And do your research. That's yeah, number one. Because research. if you don't do your research, you come out here just trying to be vegan just because you find it popular and what yeah. everybody else is doing. It's not going to work out for you, It'll buddy. be harder for you it's, it's because then be, you'll go to a restaurant and you won't know what to order or mm -hmm. you'll be, like, hungry and you'll be like, oh, there's nothing to eat. If you just take time to figure out what it means to be vegan first, you'll be good. Yeah. Prepare and, yourself. And, and even to myself, and I say this to myself all the time, and I had to get out those bad habits, but just in general of eating out so much, you know, you don't know... What no matter how good the food is, no matter where you go, it's all it's it's always something to watch over because these processed foods out here, you don't know what you're putting in your body, you don't know what these people are doing with your food before they hand it to you. So right. just being mindful of all of that. And we're young right now, so you yeah. know right now it's Being not going to gonna show right. as much or the body. Yeah, right. But no, Better okay. Get you some water. Work out. <laughs> Drink your water. You know. Don't eat out as much. We need to take care of ourselves now um, so we can develop those healthy habits so that we can, you know, develop and grow and be just as beautiful as we are right now. Ladies, that's summer body coming. Yeah, that's summer. It's time to act up, ladies. Yeah, it's nothing. time to act up. 
you got to get on your health like on your health kit get your fruits together get you a fruit basket for lunch get you the salad you know you see my cousin trying to get y'all to wild out the food also will help your mind it'll help you feel good about yourself put put good she things in your about, body she about some no treat she your trying. body good you know and you'll get good results from it you gotta treat your body good. right Look here, watch what y'all eating this weekend, cause, cause I'm gonna be at somebody barbecue. Somebody, somebody, somebody other cousin. <laughs> oh my god! You know that, but man, every single Thursday, every single Friday or Saturday, because I'm trying to get my cousin acclimated permanently. So we're going into Are this. We in there? Just, just know that we're gonna be here every week. <laughs> get to you. <laughs> Face on View podcast on all on all platforms: Facebook, Twitter. I speak Malik Daniel Malik and Malik Space Ghost mm -hmm. IG. Tune in, link in bio, my YouTube channel in bio. Subscribe, make sure you subscribe. Do all of that. You already should know all that. All right, peace. Y'all have.